Welcome into Buckets Action Network's Daily NBA Betting Podcast. We're in the workshop. We got the old school crew, man. AC, the analytics capper. J Money is money. I am your host, Sean Little. We are presented by BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. Go download the Action Network app and subscribe to the Action Network YouTube page. Tons of content coming out on the daily. You already know how the squad at the Action Network gets down. All right, these are your best bets for the Tuesday NBA playoff slate. We have two games. We got Mini versus the Nuggets back in Denver, and then we're back at the Garden for Pacers, Knicks. J Money is money. Give me your best bet for the Tuesday NBA slate. I'll take Knicks first quarter money line, minus 120. AC. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that game. I like the Pacers, Knicks under 217. And I also like the under in the other game, uh, Minnesota, Denver under 206. All right, I'm going to go against my guy, AC. I'm taking Knicks, Pacers over 216 and a half. There's two 17s, two 16s, and a, two, two, there's a 216 and a half and a 217 in the market. Try to get the best number. I'm going to lock in over 216 and a half. And I have a lean that we'll talk about before we get out of here. I'm going to lean Timberwolves first half plus two and a half minus 108 in the market as we record this Monday afternoon. No official there, but I do want to talk to the fellows just overall about that game now that it's tied up 2-2. All right, J Money is money. I'm coming right back to you. Knicks back at the Garden where they're 2-0. and they, they were able to get it done in game two with OG. He went down, no problem. Jalen Brunson came back in the second half. Closed it up. They uh, fed off the energy of the Madison Square Garden crowd. That's what they've been doing all year. They were ended up. They were able to get the W. Went out to Indiana and lost two in a row with Game Four being a shellacking. Talk to me about why you're back in the Knicks here in the first quarter. Money line minus one twenty. Yeah, I think they come out here with a lot better energy. Uh, this is just a bounce back spot for me here. Obviously, they're coming off two straight losses. Uh, they're coming off a 32 point loss as well. So, uh, Indiana kind of did what they did th- that New York did. They faded off their energy as well, had a lot better offense. The role players played a lot better as well. So, uh, me personally, I do think there's a possibility that the Knicks could run out of gas. I mean, we know that they should win this series, but they are dropping bodies here as well, right? And without OG Ananobi, their defense is a lot different um, over there. They don't really have that pass house. Siakam stopper. Uh, I mean, we know that they, they could play him one through five. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just kind of getting in and getting out early. I expect the Knicks to come out with a bounce back effort, come out with some desperation as well. Because obviously, if they lose this game, uh, then this series might be over. So I'm expecting them to feed off the home crowd early in this one. Josh Hart is probably going to play the whole first quarter. Brunson, like these guys aren't coming out of the game, man. They'll probably start leaning on their bench as the game goes on. But I'm targeting specifically the first quarter here. I think the Knicks come out here with some fight, with some desperation uh, in a bounce back mode here in this one like i say coming off the 32 point loss so coming off back-to-back losses they know that they got to come out here early with the energy i'll take them here in the first quarter on the money line yeah we talked about it a couple episodes ago right that i'm looking to back luca in dallas in the first quarter because that's the freshest that luca and the gang is going to be to start that game yeah. when we thought maybe luca was dealing with more of an injury than he actually is he's been playing 40 minutes pretty consistently now in that series now same thing kind of goes with the knicks right this is going to be the freshest they're going to be in the game in that first quarter they're going to be the 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 crowd's going to be fired up one thing that does make me nervous about the overall game is it's you can't feed off a crowd that's not there because you're down 11 you understand what i'm saying but the start of that game at the garden is going to be electric no matter what uh i think that is a really interesting play with the knicks in the first quarter ac albert win the analyst capper what do you think about that j money first quarter money line play yeah, first of all, I'm always going to be on the same side as Jay, one of the sharpest guys in the business. Um, but I'll say this. The good thing about the Knicks losing game three in the way or game four in the way they did is not only are they fresh, but they only played like 25 minutes. Like Josh Hart was averaging 48 minutes a game. They only He only ended up playing half the game. So first quarter is a nice look there. But I think it's a good segue, Sean, into our total discussion because I think the bets are correlated. If you like the Knicks in this game, I think they're going to win in a grind it out, slow it down, um, you know, minimize the number of possessions type of game, whereas the Pacers want to keep playing, want to shoot threes, and want to get out on the fast break. So for me, who have a slight lean towards the Knicks, I just like the under a lot more because I think it's easier to slow a game down than to speed a game up. Yeah, I mean, 
Is, is that your cap for the for the over essentially? So I can get in. The, we can kind of go back and forth here. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I, I just mean, I just think it's correlated. Yeah. All right, Jay. I'll come to you after. I, I'll give my cap for the for the over here. And I know Jay's not a big totals guy, but this is essentially about game flow and how we see overall the rest of the series shaping up. Now, if you go back to game one and game two at the Garden. If we really think about it, the Knicks essentially beat the Pacers at their own game. Game one and game two were wide open, up and down, high pace, and the Knicks hit a lot of shots. Fifty, Like 52 or 54% in game one, 57% in game two. They said, okay, you guys want to get out and run, we'll get out and run, and that's what we'll do with you guys. I think that's the way the Knicks – that's the only way the Knicks can compete with the six – or excuse me, with the Pacers, I think, the rest of the way. They don't have the bodies, especially with OG and Anobi off the floor, to slow down and strap up like they essentially would want to do in a, in a Tibbs type of game plan in the playoffs. They flat out don't have enough people to do that. So they are going to have to get out, open it up, and Dante DiVincenzo is going to have to knock down a lot of shots. Deuce McBride is going to have to knock down a lot of shots. Jalen Brunson is going to have to give you the 35 to 40 points consistently that he was giving you prior. That's the only way that they can keep up. If they try to slow these guys down, I, I, I just I don't think they're capable of doing that with the guys that they have on the roster currently. Now, we know also another big part of this cap is just like Carlisle came, came out and whined and complained about the officiating and the small market nonsense, that comment was garbage, by the way. Nobody's – like if I, I don't think people are – refs i should say are officiating because this team is based out of indianapolis and this team is based out of new york jay and i'm gonna let you jump in here now i do believe you don't want to know my thoughts and i and i I, (laughs) but i do believe and i did tweet this out i truly believe that the atmosphere at the garden is very difficult to referee it i think the atmosphere there is extremely tough i think people are starting to get a little out of hand that Refs are coming in leaning Knicks or leaning a certain team because of the market size. I just think overall, you're going to get more favorable calls at home when the crowd and the atmosphere is leaning one way, which is with the Knicks at the Garden. Same thing went, Same thing happened in, 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 uh, in Indianapolis. It's the same thing. The whistle flipped both sides for, for home court for each squad. So overall, I'm back at over 216 and a half here because – the two wins, the Knicks got out and ran and were fresher and knocked down shots. They don't have the bodies to strap up and slow the game down to essentially grind the Pacers to a halt. And I think also when, when Indiana comes off the bench and does their thing, they've done nothing but produce. Every single game off the bench, I think they're able to score. I think the game is competitive, but I think it's competitive being up and down and the Knicks are knocking down shots and also the Pacers – are knocking down shots. That's why I'm looking at over 216 and a half. J Money is money. Talk to me. Talk to me about the overall game flow and how you think this is going. Talk to me about the officiating. And my last point on the on the officiating is I think this flips. There's a lot more calls. It's not going to be as physical as it was in Indiana. I think when we get to New York, Brunson's going to get to the line more. A lot more people are going to get to the line. More buckets takes it to the over. Jay, talk to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to really speak to the officiating and on the foul calls and on the, uh, the theatrics because I don't want to, I don't want to piss off all the fanboys. There's a ton of fanboys and like it's just a new day in time. They kind of, you know what I'm saying? They kind of get mad over there. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to speak about the officiate. I don't want the Knicks fanboys coming for my head, but just overall game flow. I mean, it's kind of crazy because I like, obviously I'm not a total guy, but and in the playoffs, things could be a lot more crazy. We've seen two overs in New York and then we see, we saw two unders in Indiana uh, over there. So, uh, I can both, I think feel like both. Both of you guys make great points. Sean has great points as well. Like, they don't really want to slow. Obviously, they're missing their best defensive player in OG Anobi. And then they miss Mitchell Robinson as well off the bench. So, both of those are going to hurt um, for the for the um, under there. But I also agree with AC that when I'm looking at this, when I'm watching game four, and I say, all right, the Knicks are going to come out pissed the next game. What do they do? They play with energy. They play with hustle. That, may, that mainly shows up on the defensive end. You see what I'm saying? So, if they if the Knicks do want to win this game, even without OG Anobi, they still have to 
try to find some defensive answers. I don't think that, especially with them having a thin bench right now, you don't really want to run and gun with this Pacers team. So um, I think both of you guys make really great points. It's an easy stay away from me for the total. But me personally, I do feel like if the Knicks are going to win, uh, I don't think that they can win a high scoring game versus the Pacers. That's because like what we've seen, the Pacers, are they can go 10 deep on you. You see what I'm saying? Um, so I feel like the Knicks might have to try to grind it out, going to have to try their best to uh, slow them down in the half court. Is if they get to running with like with this version of the Pacers, I, I feel like they might not have enough. But uh, like I said, both of you guys make really great points, um, to be perfectly honest with you. Like both of you guys uh, make really great points. Yeah, right? I, so I agree. I agree that there's an argument for both sides. But just looking from a books, from an odds maker perspective, those first two games – in New York hit over. They were 217 and 218, and they both flew over, right? So why is the line set at the same number back at New York today at 217? To me, I think that's telling that it's going to go under. Again, at the end of the day, totals are going to be dependent on three-point variance. If a guy or a team gets hot, the unders mm -hmm. the unders over, right? But the beauty of an under is it just takes one bad quarter and that team or the, the game flow is going to change the, the total there. So at the end of the day, it might be closer to a 50-50 like Jay's, Jay's saying, and that's why he's laying off, and that's smart. I just think the I just think the, the numbers to me suggest is an under. And if I'm leaning New York, right? If I'm ne leaning New York, and I, I get your point, Sean, I get your argument, but I think with less bodies, they want less possessions, in my opinion, right? I don't think they can run run and gun. I think they have to slow it down, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're on opposite sides, so we're going to have different arguments and different beliefs on how the game is going to flow. I just don't think they have the bodies to slow Indiana offensively. So it's going to be wide open, and Indiana knows that, and they're going to try to get out there and run them. And the Knicks are going to have to respond offensively and knock down shots. I mean, if we go back and look at game four, it's just horrific. They shot 34% from the floor, 19% from three, in game four is 121-89. I see the Pacers scoring 110 at the Garden just like they did in game one and game two plus. And I see the Knicks last-ditch effort, full throttle, trying to compete with those guys, and I think that's what takes it over. Shout out to fanboys, Jay Money. Jay Money didn't want to crush all dreams today. He gave y'all a day off, man. Fanboys, Jay Money gave y'all the <laughs> evening off. Y'all enjoyed it. Y'all enjoyed the night off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, let's talk about uh, the other series real quick because I want to get your guys' opinion on this overall series and the game flow here now that we have now are in game five back, 52-80 in Denver. I lean – I haven't printed it yet. It's not an official, but I do lean Timberwolves first half plus two and a half. Um, overall, just like the Denver Nuggets – just like the Timberwolves woke up the Denver Nuggets, I believe the Nuggets now woke up the Timberwolves. And they're like, damn, we thought these boys were going to roll over here a little bit. We got three days off. We kicked it. We were going back home. We were feeling good. And mm -hmm. the champ slapped us. And Nikola Jokic reminded everybody why he is the three-time MVP out of the last four years after coming off a pretty rough game one and two where they looked dominated and just couldn't keep up with them physically. Everybody showed up for the Denver Nuggets in game three and in game four. Jokic scored 16 points in game four, probably his best quarter in his playoff career. That said, I think we go right back to Denver, and it's just a highly competitive, tight first half. Win this game, win the series type of attitude from both. So I would just take the bucket and a half, the plus two and a half points in that first half with Minnesota that I think is going to be a very competitive start to the game. And the Nuggets throughout the playoffs have shown – they have had poor first half starts, especially at home. Yeah, I can't remember last time the Nuggets won a first half in Denver. They just hasn't been happening. Uh, AC, I'll come back to you. Talk to me about uh, this game. Thoughts on the lean? No officials necessary. Just overall, where you guys are thinking on this series? Sean, I think we're just agreeing to disagree all all for both games today. Um, so I think <laughs> you mentioned you mentioned the T Wolves woke up the Nuggets, and now the Nuggets woke up the T Wolves. I think the T-Wolves are already woken up. I think they are already playing at their peak. The, here, it, the thing here is the NBA champions, the defending champions, finally are starting to play at their peak. And I think when both teams are playing at their best, Denver is better. And I know the seeding is not like that, right? Um, or it is, right? It's, two, it's a 2-3 matchup. But uh, we've seen both 
all four road teams win so far. I think that trend ends uh, in game five. I think the Nuggets take care of business in the first half and the, and the full game. Um, you're right. They haven't covered in Denver, right? The Lakers won every single first half. And then obviously Minnesota tore them up in games one and two. So I think this is a, a good spot for uh, for Denver. And honestly, Jokic, even though he just had a 35-7-7 game, he hasn't had the, the monster 45-point triple-double type game yet. And that is coming, in my opinion, whether it's this game or game six. I think it's going to happen at home in Denver. So I like Denver, to be honest. Jay, that's why they, you know, all is right in the world, AC is saying, but that's also why, you know, I get that little two and a half, you know what I'm saying? I get, yeah. that, I get that little two and a half points to kind of offset that a little bit. Jay, what do you think about the series, that first half lean, and just how you expect both teams to come out there back in Denver for game five? Yeah, well, I don't think Jokic is going for no damn 45 point triple double. I'll tell you that uh, right now. But I think that, I think Rudy Gobert kind of came back. Obviously, he just had a baby and you can be thrown off like mentally with that because you're not getting much sleep, all that good stuff. I don't care if you have like a nanny helper, all that. You want to be with the baby <laughs> yourself. You know what I'm saying? So with him being at the house, he was a total, he had a huge distraction. Mm. He came back and messed him up. Now he's going on the road. You see what I'm saying? That he won't have the baby. They can really focus in, but uh, which he might play a little bit better on the road. It's kind of crazy because the road team has one. In every single game in this series. You know I believe it was a hockey series. It, it might have been like the Stars and Knights or something like that where the road team won every series. I know the first four for sure, but sometimes it could just be really funky like that. We know that the Wolves, they love being underdogs, and it's almost like they – we didn't expect them to play a lot better in Denver, but they did. They came out was like, okay, your crowd wouldn't be – crazy stuff we want to that's when they thrive the most and when they came home and when the crowd was with them then the nuggets did the same thing they had their backs against the wall so once again both of you guys make really great points sean we've seen that the wolves can define can defend Jokic and gordon it's just like games uh three and four they kind of just really forgot about forgot how to play you see what i'm saying or they got too comfortable at the house so ac makes some great points but sean you make some great points as well i'm i'm probably off this series for the rick because i mean we've seen the wolves very high now we've seen the nuggets really high um as well now the nuggets have flipped back to the series favorites obviously they have home court advantage but um wouldn't be surprised if to be perfectly honest with you would be surprised if the nuggets took off on this one won the last four games like obviously meaning winning game five game six but it also wouldn't surprise me if the wolves got back to their defensive ways and were able to shut down the nuggets remember the wolves have the much deeper team here whereas the nuggets not even trusting their guys really off the bench you see what i'm saying they kind of just start to go with this point gordon thing that's really throwing off the wolves there so um it's all on them to to watch the film notice the patterns and get back to playing wolves basketball because i mean we had saw that this may be the team they could really dethrone the nuggets this year and it's probably the best built team as well with their size so uh it wouldn't surprise me if the wolves went in there and stole one wouldn't surprise me as well if the nuggets were able to uh to close this uh, close this series out uh, series out in six yeah i think uh the one thing that threw everybody for a little bit of a loop and kind of got the conversation a little out of whack was like damn minnesota just clapped these boys without go bear Right. Like, Gobert is gone and they slapped him anyway? Like, that, I think that's why you saw the the conversations and the, the thoughts around the series get a little out of whack. But, yeah, Denver and the boys showed you why, you know, they are the champs and uh, they're taking it back to Denver to see what they could do. Uh, it is very even. It feels very even. And I think you're going to get the highest quality out of both squads in that first 24 minutes. If – um. I just lean I, – I got to take that two-and-a-half points in the first-half situation with Denver and how they strap up, and I think they're going to come out extremely motivated. That three days off was always so interesting to me because no one got that. You haven't seen three – you haven't seen a team get three days off in between in the playoffs. I can't even remember the last time that happened. I remember looking at the schedule and being like, that's a really different wrinkle. It gave Mike Malone – Michael Malone, excuse me, Mike, my bad of a a little extra time to get ready and it gave minnesota a little extra time to feel good about themselves and it cost them ac any last thoughts before we get out of here no i i I think we're gonna see two competitive game fives i know a lot of people mentioned game five is the most pivotal right you can look at all the stats when it's tied to two the winner that wins game five and usually moves on but i think if new york this is this is kind of like my my sidebar if new york loses game five I actually like them for the series. Wow. 
Go get the exacto picks out. You could get a big number on that, no doubt. You could get the game five Pacers, game six Knicks, game seven Knicks. That would be a big – like, that's got to be a big plus money number. Go check that out. All right, to recap, J Money is money. Knicks, first quarter, money line minus 120. AC, the Antlers, Capper, Nuggets, Wolves, under 206. Knicks, Pacers, under 217. Get the best number you can. I am on Knicks, Pacers, over 216 and a half. And then I lean – Timberwolves first half, plus two and a half, minus 108. Not an official, just a lean. If you need more action, go plug that in. 4J Money is money. For AC, the analytics capper, I'm your host, Sean Little. We are presented by BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. Go download the Action Network app. Subscribe to the YouTube page. Shout out our guy, David Payne, for locking in with us on the production side. Until next time, which is tomorrow, get buckets, baby!